Hey everyone, Tio here. Today I'm reviewing the XP Pen Artist 16 second generation pen display. First of all, disclaimer, this is a review unit provided by the company. However, all the opinions in this video are my own. And this review is going to be quite long because it's going to be detailed. So if you want to save time, you can check out the text review that I have already written on my blog. The link is in the video description below or use the timestamps provided to jump to different sections of this video. So this pen display is actually one of six 15 to 16 inch pen displays XP Pen is currently selling and this table shows you the different models. You can pause this video to compare the specifications yourself. The official retail price is US $399 and currently they have a pre-order promotion going on until the 1st of June 2022 where you can get this pen display at 15% off which is US $339. All right, just to give you the bottom line up front, this is a beautiful looking pen display with solid build quality and fantastic drawing performance. The new pen that uses the X3 Smart chip is very accurate, very sensitive and has minimal initial activation force. So my overall drawing experience with this pen display is very positive. The display is laminated so there is minimal to no visible parallax. The matte screen protector provides a nice texture for drawing and the anti-glare of the matte screen protector is not aggressive so it doesn't affect the image quality of the display. Downsides, there is no pressure sensitivity with Adobe Illustrator on Mac OS. The Mac OS driver doesn't launch automatically when you start your Mac but there is a very simple workaround which I will talk about later and there is no USB-C cable included even though this pen display supports USB-C to C connection. The pen display can be used with Android OS but the user experience is not ideal and there is no support for Linux OS. So that's the bottom line and now let's take a look at the items included in the box. So that's the pen display. Everything seems to be very neatly packed. These are all the items included in the box. This is the power adapter with interchangeable plugs. This is USB type A. That's the USB type A extension cable, the 3-1 cable, the pen, microfiber cleaning cloth, quick start guide, warranty info, 11 replacement nibs, the nib remover, and one artist glove. Here's a closer look at the 3-in-1 cable. So this L-shaped connector is USB-C and will go to the pen display. On the other end, we have full-size HDMI. This red colored USB type A is for power and this black one is for data. So this is the XP Pen RT16 second generation pen display. There is a big label here which tells you to peel off this protective film which is on the display. Let's peel off the glossy reflective film. When you peel this off, make sure the surface beneath is matte textured. Make sure this is not reflective and glossy because this is a matte screen protector. So make sure you do not peel away the matte screen protector. This pen display is available in four colors. There are green, pink, blue and black. So this is the green one. On the back, we have a matte textured surface and four rubber feet at the corners. And on the front, we have a very clean and simple design. There are 10 physical shortcut buttons on the side. The buttons have nice firm clicking feedback. At the top left corner of the pen display, there is a hole that goes through to the other side. I'm not sure what that hole is for. The pen display is 12.9 mm which is just slightly thicker than the included pen. These are the two USB-C ports on the pen display. This USB-C port is for the 3-in-1 cable and this USB-C port is for USB-C to USB-C connection. Do note that there is no USB-C cable included in the box so if you want to buy a USB-C cable from XP Pen, it's US $16. These two ports are labeled beneath the pen display. And this is the power button. 
with power light indicator and these two buttons are controls for the brightness. I've just connected the pen display to my Windows tablet. Few things to note. The stand is not included. That's my own stand. If you're interested to find out what it is, the link is in the video description below. The USB-C port on the pen display is actually recessed inside the hole. If you have your own USB-C cable, it may or may not fit the pen display depending on how big this part is. So this cable does not fit the pen display. This cable, which is an Apple USB-C cable, fits the pen display. However, this is just a normal charging cable. This is not a USB-C video cable. If you want to buy your own USB-C cable, make sure it's USB-C video cable. And this Spigen cable that I have here fits because this part is small enough to go inside the hole. Be sure to get a USB-C video cable that is long enough. The one that I have here is just 70 centimeters, which is quite short, but long enough for this connection from the right side of the pen display to the right side of this tablet. If you are using a computer laptop or tablet where the USB-C ports are on the left side, and you place your computer on the left side of the pen display, get a cable that is at least 1.5 meters long. This is a beautiful pen display. I like the color H, which is quite subtle. So the display size is 15.4 inches. The resolution is 1920 by 1080p. So aspect ratio is 16 by 9. Pixelation is noticeable with 1080p displays. 1080p resolution on a 15.4 inch display is still very usable. You can have palettes on the left and the right side and still get a good amount of canvas space to work with. And this is how big the screen is compared to A4 size paper. You can see the screen is wider but shorter than A4 paper. The display is laminated, so there is almost no gap between the pen tip and the line beneath. Cursor tracking is very accurate. The cursor is always directly beneath the pen tip, even at the extreme edges. And the cursor doesn't stray away from the pen tip regardless of the angle you are holding the pen. The matte textured screen protector provides a nice tactile surface for drawing. I would say this is on the smoother side. It's not slippery, but smooth. Rougher drawing surfaces will introduce more grain and color noise to affect the image quality. But here I don't see much or any grain or color noise, so the image quality is pretty good. Only affected by the pixelation of 1080p. And this display has very good viewing angles, so colors they don't shift much when viewed from extreme angles. This is how the anti-glare looks, and this is actually really good because despite the reflections which are being diffused, you can still see the colors beneath. With screen protectors that are quite rough, this area here is going to be very white. It's going to be very difficult to see the colors beneath. Oh, one thing to note here is even though the pen display is very thin, it looks like a tablet, it's not a tablet because it is not a touch screen. This pen display has good color accuracy. I measure color support for 99% sRGB, 92% Adobe RGB, 94% P3, and 89% NTSC. By the way, these are anime wallpapers. I measured a maximum brightness of 176 nits, which is low compared to desktop monitors but it's still sufficient for use in a bright room environment such as the room that I'm in now. If I draw my curtains, I can actually use this pen display at 50, 60 or 70% brightness. This pen display is compatible with Windows, Mac OS, which is what I'm using here, Chrome OS, Android and Linux. At the time of making this review, the Linux drivers are not available yet. So with the Mac OS driver, I discovered one glitch after you install the driver, the driver will not start or load automatically 
when you start your Mac. So you have to go to the app, choose to have the app open at login. And if you want to hide the driver in the background, go into Mac OS system preferences under users and groups, login items, choose to hide the app in the background. Windows users, of course, don't have to do all this. This is Mac OS driver version 3.3.4. The Windows driver will have very similar functionality except with the addition of Windows Ink, which you may have to toggle on or off if pressure sensitivity is not working as expected. So let's see. Under work area, you can just leave all this at default. If you happen to be left-handed, you can change the rotation here, 180 degrees. And under pen settings, you can customize the two side buttons here. I'm going to have one uh, set to switch monitor, which I have already done so. So these are all the shortcuts that you can set to the side button. The pressure curve can be adjusted by moving the three dots around, or you can use this slider to move the curve. And there is mouse mode. Under shortcut keys, this is where you can customize the 10 physical shortcut buttons on the side. There are only four listed here. You have to click here to see all the 10 buttons. And these are the shortcuts you can set to the buttons. You can also key in your own keyboard shortcuts. And the shortcuts, they work well. If you use different drawing or graphic design apps, you can create a group of shortcuts for each app. Just click the plus button here to assign those shortcuts to the app that you prefer. If for some reason you need to reinstall the driver, you may want to export your configuration out first before you reinstall and import the configuration so that you don't have to go through setting all those shortcuts again. Let's do some line quality test. The initial activation force is minimal. I can draw thin lines very easily by almost applying no pressure. As long as the pen tip is touching the display, the drawing surface, you can get thin lines very easily. This is how thick the line really is. I can see slight wobble with the lines but it's not too bad. So here I'm trying to maintain consistent pressure to get lines with consistent width. And the lines, they look straight enough for me. This pen is very sensitive and very accurate. Let's do a really quick sketch here. The lines, they taper very nicely. They taper very smoothly. This is how the line tapers very smoothly, very sharply. This is the usual pen display latency as the line is trying to catch up with the pen tip. It doesn't really affect my drawing experience because I don't draw long sweeping lines. So when I create these parallel lines, there is latency, but I don't really think about the latency. This is still quite responsive for me. With MIDI Bank Paint Pro, sometimes when I tap on the display, there are no dots. So the workaround is to tap and drag slightly. This is Clip Studio Paint. No issues with dots here. Tilt sensitivity works well. The cursor can follow the direction of the pen and the pen can work right to the edge of the display. Let's talk about the drawing experience. So I'm drawing some geometric shapes here just to see whether I can connect the lines without leaving any gaps and I can do so very easily. This is because the pen is, the cursor tracking is very accurate. For pens that have cursor offset, uh, when you 
connect lines like this, it's going to be difficult. But here it's very easy. And the pressure sensitivity works really well. I'm using my keyboard for keyboard shortcuts instead of the shortcuts on the side of the pen display because I prefer to use my own keyboard. And the drawing performance is fantastic because the pen is accurate. If you are using the pen display with a laptop, it's going to drain the laptop battery quite quickly. So you will have to connect your laptop to a power source. The matte textured drawing surface will take some time to get used to because of how smooth it is. This pen display is not a touch screen, so even though it's very thin, it makes you feel like you're using a tablet, but there is no finger gesture support. The advantage of using a pen display versus a tablet would be you can use your desktop software. And that's the main difference between the pen displays and using an iPad. With pen displays, you can use your desktop software. This sketch is almost complete. This 15.4 inch display, this is a very nice, comfortable size to work with. I didn't really experience anything unusual while drawing. There are also no drawing glitches. So this is the completed sketch. Let's zoom in to take a look. So all the lines are where they should be. And earlier I said there are some issues with creating dots with midi bank. You just have to tap and drag slightly to create those dots. Pressure sensitivity is um, really good. This pen is very sensitive, very accurate. So the drawing performance is very predictable, very consistent. There are no surprises when drawing. I have tested the pen display with Windows and Mac OS using Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, Midibank Paint Pro, Critar, and Clip Studio, and they all work fine except with Adobe Illustrator on Mac OS, I wasn't able to get pressure sensitivity to work. There is no option to choose pressure to affect the line width and I don't know of any workaround. This problem does not happen with the Windows version of Adobe Illustrator. You can use the pen display with Android OS but the user experience is not ideal. So currently I have the pen display connected to this Samsung Tab S8 Ultra with the USB-C video cable and the tablet cannot provide enough power to power the pen display so i have to connect an external power source to the pen display there are many limitations when it comes to using android with pen displays and it's not specific to xp pen so first most important thing to note is there is no finger gestures so it's going to be very inconvenient to use the drawing apps that are available on android you can draw, yes, but when you want to zoom in and out, you can't do that. If you want to pen, you cannot do that. So if you want to zoom in and out or move around, you have to choose the move tool. And when you want to draw again, switch back to the drawing tool and switch back to the move tool, drawing tool. It's very tedious. There is no Android driver, so you cannot customize the shortcut buttons and they do not work and you cannot customize the pressure sensitivity for the pen. I do not see any cursor when the pen tip is near the display and whether you can see the cursor or not will depend on which tablet or Android OS you are using. 
Not being able to see the cursor is not a big problem here because the invisible cursor is always under the pen tip because there is no cursor offset. In this case, this combination doesn't make any sense because I can already draw on the Samsung tablet with the included S Pen. And even if you can draw on your Android tablet with an active stylus, it also doesn't really make any sense because of all those limitations and the less than ideal user experience. And before you can even connect this to show video on the pen display, you have to make sure that your Android tablet or your Android phone can output video signal. All right, to conclude, this is a good looking, well-designed and well-built pen display with predictable and consistent drawing performance. In other words, it has fantastic drawing performance. I did not experience any major or even minor glitches while drawing. I have tested this with Windows and Mac OS and the only issue I found was with Adobe Illustrator or Mac OS where I wasn't able to get pressure sensitivity to work. So is this worth the money? Well, you can decide. Do take advantage of the pre-order discount if you happen to be in the market to buy a new pen display because the savings is quite good. You can use the money saved to buy a USB-C cable and also a proper stand. Oh, if you have the intention to buy this pen display, consider using the affiliate links that I have for you in the video description below. I earn some commission for each sale, but at no extra cost to you, and your support helps me put out more detailed reviews such as this one that you are currently watching. And if you have any questions regarding the XP Pen Artist 16 second generation, let me know in the comment section below. I hope this review is useful. See you guys again. Bye.